Tonight, a remarkable woman with many talents. She's an artist, a designer, and a writer who's written a most unusual and compelling novel, Gloria Vanderbilt. She is a woman with a style all her own. Her fascinating life was the stuff of a bestseller and award-winning TV movie. Her own childhood memoir was hailed by the New York Times as haunting and extraordinary. She's written a remarkable novel about the troubled life and mysterious death of a beautiful socialite who led a wild and dangerous life in the Roaring Twenties. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome the lovely Gloria Vanderbilt. Thank you, Roger. Um, this book is called The Memory Book of Star Faithful. Yes. Who was Star Faithful? She was a real person. Star Faithful was a real person. She was very much a product of her time. Um, she died mysteriously in 1931. She was this beautiful woman that was found on the beach. How old was she when she, she died? She was 25. And it is still a mystery as to what happened. Murder and or suicide? It's still left open. What do you believe? Well, I have, uh, in recreating her diary, she left this uh, a diary which she called her memory book, which does not exist any longer, but it was supposed to be so startling in its revelations of, um, uh, she kept referring to AJP, who was Andrew J. Peters, who had been the mayor of Boston. And at one time, he was questioned involving possible uh, that he had been uh, instrumental in her death. And so many political figures were involved in uh, this. So you think there was a possible cover-up and that she did not die of natural causes? Well, I causes. don't think that, no. But this is what the newspapers... Newspapers uh, speculated yes, at the time. Yes, yes. Um, in, in recreating her diary, I have... Uh, I have told how, how I think it happened. But I don't want to... You don't want to give away the end. We won't ask you to. <laughs> because it really is a, a mist. It's, it's a mystery It's a mystery. Story. Okay. Yes, well, yes. we won't give away okay. the end. The, the Memory Book of Star Faithful is the name of the book. Now, the thing that makes this story unusual is that when you were, as I recall, 15 years old yourself, you saw something about Star Faithful in the newspapers. Yes. I saw a photograph of her in a magazine. and. She drew me in, into, her, into her psyche, and I cut the uh, photograph out, and I thought about her over the years for a long, long time. What and was it about her that haunted you? Well, I don't know. You know, it's like when you see somebody, and you're attracted to that person, and you really don't know why, but there is something in them that you respond to. And it's, uh, it's a very mis mysterious thing. And as all creativity happens in the subconscious, it takes a long, long time. All the time one is, in a sense, I was writing about her because I was thinking about her in my unconscious. And then a certain amount of time goes by, and suddenly one day I, 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 I can write this. And four years ago that happened, and so I started rec recreating her diary. Uh, now, she kept a diary, and, and, and this mayor of Boston was a man that she met when she was how old? Well, she was actually uh, related to him by marriage. She was born in Evanston, Illinois, and her mother was uh, a cousin of Mrs. Andrew J. Peters. And, of course, the Peters family was a very illustrious, rich, respected family in Boston. And her mother, Star Faithful's mother, wants very much to move there and be taken in by the family and be a part of that family, and finally she does contrive to go there when Star Faithful is 11 years old. And she does, in effect, is really sort of adopted by the family. And um, Star Faithful's self-esteem was very low. She had no perception of herself. At 11, nobody has much perception, do they? Uh, we get that from our parents. Really? Yes. At a very from, young age. From our, our mother and our father. And her father was really not there. And her mother was someone who was there, but she was the kind of person who knew the price of everything and the value of nothing. And she was very ambitious. And so this young woman at age 11 had a low self-esteem, and she met a man who was 44. And she met a man who was not only 44, but who was respected and admired and paid attention to her and made her feel like somebody, like a person. What happened between them? Well, 
he became obsessed with her. And it started out really like a game and like it was uh, a secret between them and like it was fun. And he started um, giving her ether. And it's very hard, you know, if we, if we try to think of this in, in, in terms that, that we can define. It really is very hard to define it. Well, it sounds it because, like child molestation. Well, it, looking at it from the limited vantage point of, of the 1990s, where victimhood is celebrated, but it really is much more complicated than that because it went on until she was 19, and they took. But he had sexual relationships. Oh, yeah. Well, yes. In in finally. He As did. I understand it, you write pretty good sex scenes, and you write erotica. Uh, yes. Well, that is part of the story, and of course, it started out really like like a, like a game, like it was fun, and then she calls the ether that he gives her creamy dreamy, and. Creamy dreamy, which makes her float away and makes her feel happy and safe and secure, then becomes horror, horror, horror when he finally does, um, uh, when it finally does happen between them. And then she has a, a breakdown when she's 19. They had gone on trips together to Europe and. Did he uh, not? Did he have sex with her at age 11 no, or 19? At at at, um, at 19. Mm -hmm. But uh, but there was a lot going on. I mean, before before sexual then. activity. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And then when she had um, when she had a breakdown, um, um, the family, uh, the mother and the the uh, stepfather moved to uh, to New York. To did the Grand parents Village. know that she was being oh, molested yes. by this? Um, not not only did uh, did did they know it, but uh, Mrs. Peters uh, knew Encouraged it. Encouraged it. Uh, certainly the mother did because she was so ambitious and Mrs. Peters who knew about it but it was su such an obsession uh, with uh, Mayor Peters that she apparently um, didn't do anything about it or couldn't do anything about it. They used to take trips together to Europe and, and of course now it would be impossible for anybody to do that but there wasn't in 1917, 18, 19 the kind of media that, uh, that we have now. So you have an 11-year-old and a 44-year-old man who is about to become mayor of Boston at yes, that time? Yes, yes. He becomes mayor of Boston. He continues the relationship. She's 19 years old. They have sex. And she kills herself or is killed at age 25. Uh, yes, that's, uh, that's, that's the framework of the story. Is, is she, what is their relationship? Is, she, is this a classic case of child molestation? No. Or was she in love with him? Or what happened? She, it really is a love story, and she did love him. She never got over him, and he certainly never got over her. It should never have happened, but it did happen, and knowing where she's coming from, it couldn't have happened in any other way than the way that it did. And she tried throughout her life, through her relationships with other men, which were self-destructive, she tried to find someone who would give her this feeling of self-esteem because, of course, in those days, um, really a woman's uh, role was defined by the man, either the, who she was married to or who she was in love with, and that's very much a part of the story. Gloria, I can't help but see the parallels with your life. Uh, uh, your mother was interested in having a good time and somewhat ambitious, as I recall. You were raised? Um, my, my mother was um, actually the most passive person that you could imagine. Really? And she was not ambitious. She wasn't around. In any, no, she wasn't. That is true. And there are many parallels in the sense that Star Faithful uh, didn't really have a father who was there. And my father uh, died when I was 15 months old. And um, but um, and my mother really, in a sense, was not there. So I did not have any role models, which really Star Faithful didn't have either. But what I had that Star Faithful didn't have was something inside me, which always um, I just um, it was like a 
rock diamond that nothing could crack. And you knew who you were even then? I didn't really know who I was, but when I went through the custody case as a child, I just, I just knew I was going to survive and I wanted to make something of my life. Gloria Vanderbilt, more of this fascinating story after these messages. That intriguing book cover uh, uh, is uh, the cover of an intriguing book uh, by Gloria Vanderbilt. It's a novel, but it's based on a real person, Star Faithful. What an interesting name. Was that a real name? Well, she was born Star Wyman, uh, Star with two R's. And her mother, uh, when she, the mother and father divorced, um, married uh, Stanley Faithful. And of course, they all immediately took the name. Yeah, sure. There was a sister called Tucker, and she became Tucker Faithful, uh -huh. and then Star Faithful. And it's really a fairy tale name, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about the parallels, and you said even as a, you, your father was not there and your mother was away, but somehow you did you feel you had self esteem, or did you have to go in search of it in your own life? Oh, I had very low self-esteem, but I did have something inside that I just knew uh, I was going to be okay. A strength. Yeah, I really did. And I don't know whether I... I used to think that having had the experience of going through the custody case when I was 10 years old, which was um, it, really, I thought that was my, my test in a way. Right. And, um, I think maybe that is what uh, what gave it to me, or maybe I was born with it. I don't know, but I have it. This is a delicate question, but did you have any molestation problems in no, your own life? No, never. Never did. No, no. What did you feel for Star when you thought she's 11 years old? She really shouldn't be involved in this. What did you well, you see, I really tried to get into her head and into her psyche, and it was really the way it happens. Um, she sees this picture of Mata Hari, you know, the famous mm -hmm, photograph sure. that we all know. And she thinks, oh, well, I'd really, when I grew up, like to look like that and be that beautiful. So she cuts the picture out and she shows it to uh, cousin Andrew. And he says, golly, I'd like to see you in a costume like that. And she loves that idea. And then he eventually does get a costume like that for her. And so she dresses up in this and he takes it to the uh, Narragansett Hotel, which was a very big hotel then in Providence, and she puts it on and she dances for him, and it, it's it's really like a like a game. But Andrew sounds a little strange. I mean, it's uh, guys at 44 hitting on 11 year olds is kind of a rough. Well, I think to to categorize it in in I mean, if 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 one chooses to categorize it in those terms, which. You know, as I may have said... You think he was in love with her oh, at, yes, even at I, that age? Oh, I, yes, I, I do. I think he became obsessed uh, with her. And he became obsessed with her, and then they did, uh, did evolve into uh, really a, a relationship because then, of course, she was uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Gloria, you sound almost as if this relationship was okay, though. I mean, that, it, that if it happened today, it'd be okay. I mean, in other words, as long as they love each other, it's okay that they're 44 and 11. No, I, I, I you don't, don't think that? I don't think that, but I Because 11-year-olds that I know just can't make that judgment. Well, I, I agree completely, and it should never have happened, but it did. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten into her head, and written it in in her voice so that reading it the reader becomes the the most trusted friend that she's confiding in and in those days uh, girls called their diary their diaries memory books and so she finally is writing to Mem, who is her dearest, most trusted friend, who, who she's telling all these things that are happening. And in turn, then, the reader becomes Mem. Do you... Uh, did she suffer from depression over this? I, uh, I, I would think, certainly, if we were... if we were thinking of it in terms today, she probably was, and she probably... Um, I mean, if she had had somebody to talk to, somebody that she could really confide in that could give her some feedback other than a, a, a piece of paper, which really finally is uh, 
although she does feel absolute confidence and safety telling all her innermost secret feelings to this, it, it really isn't like having a mother or a father that, that she could talk to because she really didn't have that because her mother was encouraging this uh, relationship. She had a short and painful life. Is, is that yes. Well, she was really, I think, a, 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 a doomed person. I think that what happened to her, because of what happened to her uh, in her childhood, she just didn't have the strength to survive it. And um, So you see the fundamental difference between you and stars. You had this rock inside of you that yes. would make you survive, and she never had that. I think that's true, yes. Is that genetic? Where did you get that rock? Where did you get the toughness? I, I don't really know. To survive the marriages, the, all I'm, the things you've been through? I'm not really tough, and I don't admire toughness, because I think that the most important thing is to be vulnerable and to be able to love. And I think my greatest gift is that I, I have the talent to love. And I think that's the most important thing. After Anybody, everything you've been through in your life, do you think you'll fall in love again and get married? And well, I'm in, I'm in love right now. Are you? Of course. Yes? So it's being very important. In, it is? Oh, absolutely. Well, that's what they Aren't say around. I keep trying to tell these young men on the crew they'll clear their <laughs> face up, but they never they you know, they never fall in love, these guys. They, oh, they want to play do. sports. Yeah, no, eventually no, they'll grow they up. Do. They want to go out and play absolutely. ball. You know? Absolutely. Um, yeah. We've just got 30 seconds. We have to take uh, a, another break. Uh, is, is this, is the Star Faithful um, a person that somebody else, I mean, she had such an unusual life. Can the average reader relate to her? I think every woman re reading her, her diary will relate to her. I, I don't know how, I'm actually fascinated how men will react to it because it really is, I don't think there's one woman that won't like it. And identify with it in a lot of ways. Okay, we have to take another break. We'll be back with uh, Gloria Vanderbilt right after these messages. This is the book. It is author Gloria Vanderbilt. She's written a new novel, uh, The Memory Book of Star Faithful. Intriguing title, intriguing cover. Uh, in the break, we were talking about the fact that this uh, case at the time got the kind of press that O.J. Simpson's yes, getting today. Did. Is that right? It did. You know, your case got that much. Yes, you must be, yes, you're yes. sort of attracted to these cases that get uh, all this publicity. Well, um, when I got so much publicity as a child, I very early on, I don't know how, but decided I would rarely read anything about myself. And I really rarely do because I knew that if I did, I would turn into a pillar of salt and never do anything <laughs> in my life. I don't believe that. I think your first <laughs> assessment was true that somewhere there's so, a core of steel. To get through life, so. you've got to have that. But uh, you know, the, I believe we all lead accidental lives. Uh, that that you know, it's an accident of yes. birth that we didn't get born in Somalia. It's an yes. accident of birth that we had a parent or we didn't. It's an accident of birth, and it's how we deal with that that becomes important. If you could have designed a life for yourself, what would you have designed? How would you have lived differently? What would you like to have done? I wouldn't have had it any diff different. Really? Really. Yeah. You wouldn't have grown up in the Midwest and gone to football games and just kind of hung out with the, the kids and had a normal mom and dad? And they, you ever wonder great. about huh? Oh, yeah, I've wondered about that a lot. Actually, it sounds great. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, you would have adapted in any case, I think, right? I think so, yes. Yeah. I think I would have been very thrilled. Did anything in your life throw you? Did anything really just almost push you? Well, I'm very resilient. And um, here I am. You see me sitting here, so. You keep coming back. Yeah. You lost a child. Yes. That must have been as close as you can get to uh, getting near the edge. Yes. Is it? Yes. How were you able to overcome that? Because many people in our audience face that. I saw this morning a young woman was killed by a drunk driver, a beautiful young woman. There was a picture of her. And she'd been involved in some... Uh, project at school where six months before she had played the yes. victim of a drunk driver and now she was the victim. How do parents get over that? How do they deal with them? I think support groups help. Yeah. I know they help me. I think that if you have... I, I so believe that everything happens for a reason. And even though we don't understand it at the time, that we will someday and that it is positive and that it is good. 
and I think that you 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 get through it by living moment to moment and breathing in and out and um, is that religion in you it, it it's is really it a not a form, formalized uh, religion but I have it very strongly in me and I lost my husband with a heart attack when he was only 50 and it's going to be all right though I mean it really is and I, I believe that and I have faith in that you know I think to have survived the life you led and uh, and to be as uh, lovely and happy and and productive as you are to be able to sit down and write a book like this. Uh, I admire you a great deal for that. That's, uh, that's a wonderful quality. Thank you. Okay, we're going to wrap it up there. Gloria Vanderbilt, uh, the book, the memory book of Star Faithful. You can get it in your bookstore right now, so go out and do it if you want some good reading over the weekend or whatever you're going to do. Uh, you'll find it fascinating. Thank you very much Thank for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. Here.